Are we, we're on uh, 67A. Okay. Um, a little bit of background, sort of where we're now sh shifting gears. Uh, yesterday we spoke about Asmachta a little bit more today. Um, now we sort of begin begin talking about uh, some of the finer points of Ribbis, and then we move to Iska, which we'll, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Iska is a business, and we'll talk about different types of businesses, but we'll already start this you know, business. What's the business idea? The business idea is... it. The critical feature of a business. Let's, let's move backwards. We, we, when we started Asia National, we pointed out the obvious question: What is the significance of the Torah prohibiting ribbis? Like, how are people supposed to invest and build build capital? Mm -hmm. And the answer is that you're supposed to do it by doing an isca. An isca is a joint venture. It's where two people agree to. It's an it's you, it's an investment. Mm -hmm. The you, the feature of an investment is that you 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 have the possibility of sustaining a loss. That's the feature of an investment. Then we'll start talking about the more of the details of these of how this investment works and how it could be done and how loans that are effectively structured as investments are not are not good. But we'll get to it. <laughs> but first, we have the story. I I a, there was this woman, the Amarleila who gave her make She sends a messenger, go buy uh go buy property from my relative. So also Zavon he went to he went to, to his to her relative and he bought the property. So as he was purchasing the property, Amr Le, so he, the the seller says to the buyer, the buyer again here is a messenger. He represents the woman. I just want to confirm that if I have money at some later point in time, I can redeem the property and get it back. So Amr Le, so the messenger who's representing the buyer says back to the seller, at Venavla Venavla Ochi. You and Navla, Navla is the woman, the, the, the name of the woman who sent who sent the messenger. Mm -hmm. You and Navla are relatives, so you'll work it out. So Amr Rabba Rafuna, call at Venavla Ochi. Uh basically because he said you and the relative will work it out, you and Navla, your relative will work it out, therefore. It, it is it is considered as though he has not sold the field without the intention to redeem it, and therefore the sale is not valid. Or whatever, it is valid, but he could redeem it. So now, obviously, um, Ara Hadra, the property, if he wants to redeem the property, he can take it back. What about Perry? What about the fruits that the, the buyer or the woman ate already? Can he can she keep those? My ribis ketsutsa hava vietsa vidyanam. Is this considered as if it's ribis ketsutsa? I pointed out yesterday and many times before, ribis katsutsa is set ribis. It's the classical type of ribis where you give a loan and you specify an interest payment at due at the end of the loan. That's ribis derisa. This wouldn't be quite ribis katsutsa because it's not, you know, it doesn't seem like he specified anything, but it would be pretty close to it. Um, ribis katsutsa meaning because effectively they specify that, that she can, can eat the fruit until... He redeems the field. Now, this is this would not be the tech, it would not be the biblical type of ribis tzutza because this is a sale. R biblical ribis is only in terms of a loan. So the yaitz of the and and you can and if it's but if it's so close to ribis tzutza, then the rabbis would be able to remove the interest. In this case, it would be the fruit of the field. Uh, or do we say he avak ribis have of eight of the onim, or do we say no? This is like the dust of ribis. Avak ribis is the rabbinical type of ribis that isn't so close to ribis tzutza. That it is not returned, you know. You're not allowed. To, you're not allowed to collect it. But if you collect it, we don't take it away from you. So Amar Rabbi Rafonov, Mistavak Yavak Ribis Hava Veinyets of the Yonim. It makes sense. This is not a biblical type of ribis. It's like the dust of ribis, and therefore the Veinyets of the Yonim. If you've already, if she's already ate the fruit, the the court cannot remove it from her possession. Vechena Marava. Rava said similarly. Vechena Marabo. It is like avak. It's like the dust of ribbis. Okay. Um, the um, Abaya is to Rabba. In other words, Rabba just said that this type of this type of sale, 
right? The sale where he has the right to redeem it is like avak ribis. It's like the dust of ribis. Sabai so wants to know, what about a mashkanta? Now, in, he, in modern Hebrew, mashkanta is a mortgage. You know, uh, mashkanta, if you go to, in, 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 uh, you go to the advertisements, it's mashkanta ot, uh, those are mortgages. Okay, over here, it's it's a little bit different. This mashkanta is, there's two types of mashkanta. We'll talk about it. There's a mashkanta de solik and a mashkanta de loy solik. What does that mean? And uh, it, within this category, we really have to sort of mm -hmm. buy it up. And, the, and here is sort of the first opening where we'll find a way to do a business that alone that looks uh, a business that really is sort of structured like a loan. Okay, so what is a mashkanta? Mashkanta is like this. The basic idea is I give you a, pro I give you a loan and you give me back a property as a collateral. But this is not just a collateral. The property actually could be used to reduce the payment of the loan. Mm -hmm. So meaning I can work the property and by working the pro property, I can reduce my payment. And there's two ways to do this. There's a mashkanta de loy solik. What does that mean? So that in, in, in uh, you know, in, in, um, in uh, what was it called? Uh, contemporary times, the country we live in. So there's, there are residential loans and commercial loans. What's one of the big differences between a residential loan and a commercial loan? So I believe federally, a, a residential mortgage, you're allowed to prepay. You can pay early. If you have you win the lottery tomorrow, you can knock down the whole value of the mortgage and you're exempt. Yeah. What about the fact that the bank threw in two, three thousand dollars into evaluating your loan? Mm -hmm. Too bad. Bank has to take the loss. That's the rule. So if you're a residential homeowner, you can pay back early. However, with a commercial loan, most states do not, most states allow exemptions to commercial loans. So a commercial loan document can specify that a prepayment is not allowed. And why is this? Because the commercial loans are much more complicated. It requires a lot more of investment on, on the part of the lender. The lender doesn't want a prepayment. He wants to, he expects the full value of the loan with the interest to be paid at the end of the term. So commercial loan, you can't pay early. So now in this mashkanta, this mash, one of the differences between mashkanta de solik and mashkanta de solik is whether an early payment is allowed. In a mashkanta de, de solik means to be removed. A mashkanta de solik means that the property is to be removed upon payment. So I give you the loan, you, uh, I give you the loan, and um, uh, the the you you have the lend the borrower has the money to prepay, he makes an early early full payment, he takes away the collateral. Fine. However, the mashkanta de loy solik means I can't remove him. the 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 borrower cannot remove the lender. Mashkanta de solik is like a sale. It's like a business for a few reasons. So there's, there's a fixed pay, there's a fixed period. There's ten years. The so-called lender could use the property. And that reduces the debt obligation of the borrower by a certain amount. Mm -hmm. However, the truth of the matter is that this is much. This is considered a sale, because the bar, borrower does the borrower does not have the option of an early payment. So it's considered as if I'm buying the field from you for ten years for a loan for ten thousand dollars, and over ten years I'm entitled to whatever grows. Now, by the way, as you might imagine, what happens if it's ten years of drought? What's what's the total value that you got? Zero. 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 So over here, this is one of the key features we'll have to learn about as we approach ISCA, is the potential for loss. In a mash in a mashkanta, both both types, whether a prepayment is possible or isn't possible, a loss is always possible. The 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 lender may suffer a loss should the uh, yields of the property not equal what he was expecting. Okay, we'll soon see. There was a guy who did a trick here. He leased it back to the borrower. That trick doesn't work because that's effectively that's effectively a loan. We'll get to it. Okay, right? Because you, when you lease, you're fixing the, you're fixing the income. So now he he borrowed it at full risk, but then he leased it back to the borrower so that the bar that the difference between the 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 we'll, we'll get we'll get to the difference between the, the amount of that he's reducing the loan versus the, the lease payment the borrower is making is the interest effectively. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll explain in a moment. But regardless, the the, the mashkanta is has the potential in it for a loss. This is true both of mashkanta de solik, mashkanta where you can throw, the, you can remove the lender, or mashkanta de loy solik where you cannot remove the lender. Mashkanta de loy solik is like a sale. 
This means that over here, the it's considered like you bought the property for 10 years under a fixed arrangement. You mm -hmm. gave the guy an initial $10,000 payment. And for every year you own the property, you reduce the payment to five years contract, let's say, every year $1,000 is removed, and then the redemption value of the field is 5000 So it's considered sort of like a sale with a condition for redemption. It's not considered a loan. And the reason it's not considered a loan is because early payment is not possible. Then there's a Meshkan to the Solik, similar idea. We'll, we'll talk about how exactly this is done. There's a few different ways to do this, as you might expect. One way to do it is to say, look, uh, here's a property. Any fruit you take off the property, it reduces the loan value. Except for the except for the fact that that another point I should have mentioned is that the mashkanta and mashkanta either one who's the obligation to work the field, the lender, the lender has the obligation to work the field. So, the the deal is as follows: in, in a mashkanta the salak, this could be a type of deal. Basically, uh, I lend money to the borrower. The borrower allows me to use his field, and it's subtracting the cost of labor. Any income it makes from the field reduces the value of the loan. Mm -hmm. total, the loan is totally reduced, and then he could take it back. Or maybe, no, Mishkanta, Mishkanta allows me to use the property, and it doesn't reduce the value of the loan at all. Mm -hmm. Or it reduces the value of the loan in a fixed amount. This is called a nechaisa. We'll, we'll get to it. Nechaisa. Okay, these are the different mashkanta types of relationships. And, and really, you know, if you don't, we'll, we'll talk about this a lot more. This is really the next page, you know, half a page or so. Okay, so I'm going to rob a mashkanta mai. What's the story of a mashkanta? Is this ribis or not? Is this a vak ribis or not? Mai. Now, the first type of mashkanta we're talking about here is where the there was no agreement. The borrower hands over the collateral to the to the lender, and there's no agreement about what's going to happen. What's going to happen to the field? And uh, the, the 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 lender decides, you know, he's going to use it and he's going to eat it. He'll eat from the fields. Awesome time am I? Mission to like cutsly. How can I make cutsly? Over here, this is not ribis. Why? Because there's no cuts. There's no katitsa. Katitsa again is setting about setting a price. There's no ribis here because nobody set a ribis. You know, and also by the way, maybe the field will grow and maybe it won't. So this is avak ribis. This is not real ribis, and therefore it doesn't. It cannot. It, judges cannot force the return of the interest. Idilma, or alternatively, hasan zvini hakahava. We're about two thirds down. Sixty-seven a. First one line is hasan. Hasan zvini hakahava. Or do we say no? There's a distinction. In in the previous case of Rava, uh, one second, but the story of the story of Navla, right? The, the woman who bought the field. So she she made a purchase. It was it was structured like a sale. Mm -hmm. However, in this this it's clearly structured like a loan. Mashkanta is the collateral of a loan, so therefore it's considered like ribis kitsutsa, and it has to be returned. Like we pointed out, that there is many distinctions between between a loan that's structured like a loan and a so-called loan that's structured like a sale. Because real ribis is only possible if it's structured like a loan. If I sell you the field and allow you to use it until I redeem it, even though that's a so-called loan, but it's still so-called. It's not an actual loan. It was structured like a sale. And therefore, there's no biblical ribbis. Biblical ribbis is only an effect in a loan, structured like a loan. And therefore, the rabbis, we spoke about this yesterday, nodding your heads. We said this yesterday, I think, twice already. <laughs> um, Biblical ribbis is only when it's structured like a loan, and therefore we're more lenient and rabbinically between a loan structured like a loan and a loan and a sale which looks like a loan. So that would be the distinction, and maybe Rava would be more stringent in a loan with a collateral than he is with a sale. Response: Response: time and time The key component is the kitsitsa, whether the interest was set. In order for biblical ribbis to be in effect, the ribbis has to be set at the outset. And this was not set. There was no agreement at all. So therefore, that's the key component. If it wasn't set, then there's no ribis, and you, you can't you can't collect you can't collect the interest. Meaning, a court cannot order the receiver of the interest to return the interest to the borrower. And as I'll point out again, we said many times, it's very important to recognize ribis interest is prohibited for the for the lender to charge, and it is also prohibited for the borrower to pay. Even though the borrower gets back his interest, he's not exempt here. He violated Torah prohibition by paying interest. 
Amr Rapapi. Rapapi says, Ovid Ravina Uvda, the Choshev Api Peri, the Loy Karabba Rapuna. Rev Papi had a story. I'm sorry, Rev Papi said over that Ravina had a story and he took away money, meaning he collected the interest. Even though there was no Kitsitsa, he still required the interest to be returned. And this is not like the opinion of Rabba because there was no Kitsitsa. Amar Mar Breder of Yasef Mishmed Rafa. So Mar, the son of Rav Yosef, says to Rav, "Hold Mashkanta ba'asur the Masalki." Okay, so now we talk about Mashkanta ba'asur the Masalki, a Mashkanta in a town where you can make an early payment. Okay, so like we, okay, so now you, you, you so the guy, the, the again, the borrower gives the the collateral of the field to the lender, and the lender is consuming consuming the the fruit of the field. But the borrower can remove them at any point in time. So Akal Shirzuzing, Miss Akinale, as soon as the lender eats the amount of fruit that equals the loan value, we remove him from the field. However, Akal Tfei, let's say he manages to eat a little bit more. Okay. Meaning, let's say, okay, so the field was the loan was a thousand dollars. He hands over the field. The guy starts cutting his apples. Right, he plants, he, plant, he he fertilizes the apples the orchard, and then he the apples grow, and he starts cutting. As soon as he gets a thousand dollars of apples minus the labor cost, then we say, okay, you can you can give the, the borrower can collect the field back now. The, the loan is completely repaid. Let's say the guy eats fifteen hundred dollars of apples before the borrower has a chance to get back the field. That extra five hundred is avak ribis. It's the dust of ribis, and like we said, the dust of ribis, the judges cannot force or force a removal of. So we can't take it away. Let's say the guy has two debts running simultaneously. He has this thousand dollar debt with the with the with the collateral that the guy eats fifteen hundred dollars, and separately he has a loan for five hundred dollars. We can say, well, look, he took an extra five hundred dollars of ribbons here. Let's carry it on to the other loan, and both loans now are repaid. It doesn't work that way because it's avak ribbons; it's not collected, and too bad the borrower loses five hundred dollars. Okay, very important. The ask me, but let's say. The borrower dies. Now, the way it works is that the the borrower dies. He has he has children. Who is who is responsible for ensuring that nobody steals money from the children? Very good. The Jewish courts and 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 probably their appointed guardian. Because the court is responsible for the assets of the of the uh, orphans. They make an automatic protest. As soon as the guy reaches the thousand dollars, even if they didn't protest at all, it's considered as if they protested. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if the guy collects any money past that fifth that thousand dollars, he must reimburse it back to the, the orphans. Because the court lodges mm -hmm. as, as if it were an automatic protest. The court cannot forgive the assets of the of the orphans because it's not their responsibility to do that. It's the responsibility to protect the assets of the orphans. So therefore, as soon as he reaches the thousand dollars, the property returns, and anything he eats afterwards is considered to have been stolen, and therefore he must re he must reimburse it. Unlike when he took it from a regular borrower who is responsible for his own things, and if he doesn't collect, he doesn't protest and get back the property, then any additional interest he's forgiven. Okay. So all Chal Shiruzim Sakina Le All Chal Fei Mafkina Mina We take it away with Chashvina Mishtaro Lishtara And if he took it, if he ate it anyway, and we can't take it away, we calculate it against multiple multiple loans. If these orphans have their father had two loans, we'll use one. We'll use the extra interest he collected to pay off another loan. Hmm. For the same logic, it's as if the the court has lodged an automatic protest, and anything beyond that is considered stolen. Okay. Now, obviously, this is all true by Mashkanto de Sola. Right, Shanta the Salak we explained was a collateral. The borrower hands the lender of collateral of the field as collateral, which the lender is allowed to use. But at any point in time, the borrower can kick him off the property. He can make an early payment, pay off the loan, and, and the collateral is lost. The collateral, I'm sorry, the collateral is lost from the lender, goes back to the borrower. However, Mashkanta the Loy Salak, if the collateral, if the borrower cannot make an early payment. So then we say that the, the relationship here is much more akin to a sale. And it's not a loan. And therefore, uh, there's nothing, you can, you can eat as much fruit as you want. And the guy can't make an early payment. And you have a right to be in the property for as long as specified in the contract without any consequences of, of ribis. It's not a ribis. It's, no, it's not an interest relationship. It's a sale. 
Amr Vashi. Rashi says, Hash the Amr Ochot Fela Mafkina Mine, Ochot Shir Zuzi, Nami Loy Mesakina Lebe Loy Zuzi. My time of Sluki Blay Zuzi, Afuki Mine, Mine, who? There was no agreement here about what in the Shkanta the soul. So far, is um ribis is alone. Every 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 piece that you ate is all avak ribis, and you can't collect any. The, the borrower cannot collect any of it. And if he wants to feel back, he has to make full payment. Hmm. Two Okay, over of Ashin of the Bissam Kitanim, Kikitolum. One second. <clears throat> there was a story of a borrower that had orphans that were children, and, and Ravashi treated them in, in a certain sense like adults, meaning that the uh, the lender was eating fruits of the field, and and um and uh uh, Ravashi says, look, Ravashi told the orphans, you know, if we want to get the field back, we'll have to make a full payment to get back the field. The fact that he ate enough value to repay the loan is not sufficient to return the property to the borrower. The borrower must make the, make, must make the actual payment, and the court, the court appointed custodian had a decision whether to redeem the field for the full value of the loan or not. Okay. So Rava, the, the, the son of Rav Yitzhak, said in the name of, of Rava, the contemporary of Rav, Rav Yitzhak, by the way, Okay, now we learn about Nechaisa. What's Nechaisa? So we'll see that there's a few, again, we again we have Mashkanta de Solak, Mashkanta de Loi Solak. Mashkanta de Solak means early payment is possible. Mashkanta de Loi Solak is where early payment is not possible. Mashkanta de Solak is a sale. So we won't really talk much about it. Mashkanta de loy solik is a loan. I'm sorry. Mashkanta de loy solik is a sale. You can't remove, you can't make an early payment. It's a sale. Mashkanta de solik, you could remove the guy. Um, it is a loan. However, if you use nechaisa, it's permitted. What's nechaisa? Nechaisa is as follows. There's an agreement here between the borrower and the lender that for every year that the lender is on the property, the value of the loan is reduced by a fixed amount. That fixed amount may or may not be commensurate with the value of the property, mm -hmm. right? It may be that the value it may be much smaller than the value of the property, but that's permitted. But sort of Marabonin, however, if you're a Torah scholar, then Afilu Benachaisa Lanechol, you shouldn't be using the you should not be using the clause of Nechaisa, reducing the loan by a fixed amount for every year that the lender is on the property. And again, at any point in time, the borrower can remove the lender by making full payments or whatever making. Payment of whatever is left of the value of the loan. Why shouldn't a scholar be? Because it's it's too close to ribis. People got confused. Oh. So a scholar should should be has to be more oh. careful, and therefore he he shouldn't do it. But but obviously it is it is permitted. Okay. So the says alba So what should how how should the scholar eat? Sigmar so says bikitsusa with kitsusa. What is kitsusa? We'll get to what is kitsusa. Honey kitsusa sharia. This works according to the opinion that says kitsutsa is valid. Or according to the opinion that says kitsutsa is prohibited, then what do we do? It's where we learned. Kitsusa. You make a kitsutsa. The kitsutsa is permitted even for the scholar. What is that? There's a debate between Ravach and Ravina. Chadamar one says kitsutsa sharia, but Chadamar kitsutsa asira. One says it's permitted, one says it's permitted. So what is it? So what is kitsutsa? The Amr lay. Ad chashishinina achilna balayna chaisa, and a kind of elach shamino ka kula peri. Here's the deal. I get to use the property for five years, no reduction in the loan. And then after five years, whatever is eaten is redu reduces the value of the loan. One second. Okay. And the reason for this is because it, it sort of looks like a sale. It's a type, it's a type of sale where you're you're providing a thousand, you're you're giving the guy ten thousand dollars. The guy agrees to hand you, you're effectively using that $10,000 to rent the field for five years, which, by the way, may result in profit and may not result in any profit at all. Mm -hmm. And then and then you're 
allow, then you're saying that with the next after the next ten thousand dollars of fruit is eaten, it goes back. It goes back to the uh, to the uh, borrower. So this is sort of it's an investment. There may be profit, there may not be profit. The lender assumes the risk. You know, should there be no profit, mm -hmm. and therefore it's permitted. According to one opinion, according to the other opinion, it's not permitted. Ikadamri, another opinion is Kobala and Chaisa Osir. There must be some component of Nechaisa for this permit for this to be permitted. Meaning, in, in this example, the first example of Kitsusa, there is no Nechaisa whatsoever. Meaning, the lender gets to use the field for five years with no with no reduction at all in the so-called loan. Only and after that, there's no fixed reduction, right? It's a commensurate reduction. As much as I harvest, that's the reduction in the value of the loan. And now in the second version, we say, no, 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 that's prohibited. You didn't use fixed amounts. You have to use, there has to be a fixed component to it. Everybody would agree in the, in the scenario of five years of no reduction and then commensurate reduction, that that is ribus, according to the first version, according to the second version. According to the first version, that's a debate. According to the second version, that's prohibited. Everyone agrees it's prohibited. So what is the debate? Okay, the second version is the what's kitsusa? It's a combination of nechaisa with 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 kula peri. What does that mean? It means the first five years I give you a fixed reduction. Every year the ten thousand dollar loan gets reduced by a thousand dollars, and then the remaining five thousand dollars is commensurate to what grows from, from the fields. I, I commensurate to what grows, what I harvest. Okay, and that's the debate. One opinion says it is permitted for to do, to do this, and the other opinion says it's prohibited to do this. Manda also becomes a sharibas According to the opinion that, okay, so in the first version, right, five years of no reduction, then commensurate reduction, depending on harvest. According to that version, the opinion that says that's prohibited would hold that if I modify that relationship to do the first five years of fixed reduction, followed by commensurate reduction, then it would be permitted. So the first, the first prohibitive opinion is lenient in the second opinion, meaning in the, in the case of a combination of nechaisa, nechaisa plus kulapayari. Nechaisa meaning fixed reduction plus commensurate reduction. Five years and then, and then commensurate. Manda oser bebas raisa, okay. I'm sorry. Manda oser kemais the shor bebas raisa. Okay. Manda oser bebas raisa heiki shor lemechol. Okay, so let's go. Now, according to the second version, even a relationship of five years of fixed reduction followed by commensurate reduction according, according to the harvest, that's also prohibited. So what type of mashkanta relationship is permitted? A mashkanta de surah. What is a mashkanta de surah? The cost of Bahaki, this is what it says. The Mishlam Shanya Ilin, Tipik Ara Da Beloy Kasef. Uh, one second. Okay. A uh, mashkan de is very simple. It's basically you you are buying the field for a fixed amount of years. And after those years, the property goes back to the borrower. So this is like a long-term lease. And it's a sale. You know, a lease is a type of sale, at least in Talmudical terms. And therefore, this has nothing to do with a loan. And there's, not, there's nothing prohibited about it. This is a pure nechais relationship. So you're saying, you're saying that I'm lo uh, loaning. I'm selling you the field for ten years, ten thousand dollar loan. After the end of ten years, it goes back to you. That that that, that that's a lease, effectively, and therefore, um, and therefore it is permitted. And a scholar is allowed to use this method, uh, according to this. You should say that according to this opinion, it's the only method, even for a non-scholar. For is this is the opinion of the prohibit. This is the most prohibitive opinion, according to the more lenient opinions. A scholar is allowed to use a scholar is not allowed to use nechaisa, but everybody else is. Meaning, and so in Mashkanta de Sura, you have it for 10 years, and you can't change, this is a Mashkanta de Loisola. You cannot remove him. You can't make an early payment. Uh, but according to the, the more lenient opinions, a regular person is allowed to say fixed reduction, you know, it's $1,000 per year, and at any point, the borrower can redeem the property for whatever is left of the value of the loan. But a scholar shouldn't do that. A scholar should use a more complicated relationship. Okay. Okay, so now let, let's let's explain this for a moment. This is just uh, uh, quickly. Let's go through the outside, and we'll go through them in a second. Inside, um, basically, a mashkanta de solik 
meaning a collateral that the borrower can remove the lender at any given point in time by paying him the full value of the loan or whatever's left of it. Mm -hmm. This is considered a loan. And therefore, the, the lender using the property does not actually own it. Why is it significant? What significance does it have that the lender doesn't actually own it? Well, if it's if I don't actually own it, then let's say let's say the lender has creditors, and um, and lenders creditors the lender dies, mm -hmm. and the rule is you can only collect from the children of debtors if they own property. This is not considered a property that he owns. So therefore, the creditor of the lender cannot collect the the property he's sitting on if it's a mashkan that is solid where he could be removed. Similarly, um, similarly, because it's considered a debt, uh, you know, it's sort of considered that he's eating his way through his debt. A firstborn is not entitled to eating debt. Let's explain this. Doesn't sound too good. <laughs> a firstborn gets a double portion, right? Now, it's a very, very complicated sugya, which we'll get to, like I said, in about, uh, you know, 170 days or so, something like that, a little more than that, um, called uh, uh, called Roy and Mursik. One of the conditions for a, one of the conditions to get a portion is that the portion, the, the, the money has to be available immediately. If the money sort of uh, is not going to double portion, this property that, that where the lender is eating the fruits and he doesn't actually own it because the buyer, the borrower, can take them off at any given point, they're not going to double portion because this is Roy and not Muxik. Again, whatever Roy and Muxik is, we'll get to that as, as it comes. Okay, one second. Okay, and furthermore, another key component of a, a loan with a with a collateral. One second. Uh, a loan with a physical collateral is is not uh, is not disturbed by Shemitah. The reason for this is because a a um, lender is considered to own the collateral. I spoke about this in, earlier in the Sefer. A famous statement of Rav Yitzchak. A a lender lender owns the collateral because he owns the collateral. So therefore, he owns the debt. He's sort of as if he's, he's collected the debt already. It's already collected. And therefore, therefore, Shemitah does not disturb the loan. He can collect the loan after Shemitah. However, this type of relationship doesn't actually own property. He doesn't acquire it. Therefore, Shemitah comes and disturbs the loan. He can no longer collect it after Shemitah unless he wrote a document called a principle. So if I then himself is given. However, none of this is true with the Mashkan to the Loisal. If you can't remove the guy from the property, it's like a 10-year it's like a 10-year sale, it's a lease. And therefore, a, a creditor could collect it. A Firstborn does get a double portion and and a and Shemitah does disturb the loan. It's not a loan, it's a sale. Shemitah doesn't disturb leases. Good. But although I thought regardless, it goes back to the ancestral. Not, that would be evil. No, I only okay. Yeah, yeah, I like to point it out when we learned we learned in, in Gitan, we pointed out that there were only about seven or eight Yavels that the Jews have kept. Right, right. There weren't that many of them. No, well, maybe less than seven, yeah. six maybe. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, okay, so now we'll just see the Gemara quickly. So this is a Mashkan to the Solak. Remember, Mashkan to the Solak, a, a, a borrower could take away the property early by making the full payments. Predator of the lender because it's not property. A firstborn does not portion because it does not get a, a double portion with regard to in form of a loan. And this is considered a loan. Because it's a loan, Shviyas will end it. He will not be able to collect it post Shemitah. However, in a, in, a, in a town, now, to point this out also, the, this Mashkanto was typically dependent on the town. Some towns, the, it was customary that you couldn't make early payment, and some towns it was customary that you could We'll talk about what what if you're in a different type of town and you want to make a different you want to, you're in one town and you want to make a different type of relationship. We'll talk about how to do it. Right, page mission, please. About halfway down the page, first one line But after the salki in a like a sale and a real property, therefore Bachai Gravy Man, a creditor could collect it to Bakho Noit the Bapi Nayam first point does get a double portion. The ain't shvias mission tossa it does not end it. Okay. Marzutra says the name of Rapopo. 
Hi, Mashkanta. Ask Saki. Masakali. Of a film with Tamri da Abudia. In a town. Make an early payment. And the borrower makes the early payment. But guess what happened? As he was making the early payment, the lender's workers' um, dates is that you bang the trees until the dates fall down. What you do is you spread out these huge, you know, painters painters blankets underneath, and they fall down everywhere. And then you roll up the blankets and you put them into the baskets. So this way, it's sort of an easy way to to, to harvest it. Mm -hmm. The 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 hamri de abudya is the dates that are on these blankets. So as soon as you make payment, the the dates that are on the blankets are 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 not no longer belong to the lender. And, he, and those days go go to the borrower. However, the Iagvinu besisni kano kaninu. However, let's say he had already taken some of the dates, put them into baskets, and lifted up the baskets. That's a kinyan hagbal. Kinyan hagbal. He acquires it, and <clears throat> and and you cannot collect those those dates that have been picked up in a basket. Ulamad amar kelev shlekech v'shus mecha kano lekech afilu delay b'inu besisni kaninu. Let's say you're of the opinion that there's a debate whether or not the vessels of the buyer in the domain of the seller acquire. According to the opinions that say it do does acquire, then those mats that are spread out under the tree belong to the lender. They're the vessels of the lender in the domain of the seller, which is the borrower. And therefore, if you hold that that is a valid opinion, then he does acquire the dates that are on those mats. Okay. Continue. Okay, Pshito. This is obvious. In a town where the normal relationship is that the buyer is allowed to make an early payment. And they agree that it's a fixed arrangement. You can't make an early payment. So fine, that's that's the arrangement. That's the arrangement. But in a town where you cannot remove the guy, you can't make an early payment. He says he wants to have the ability to make an early payment. My, what's the story? You need to make a kinya not. Okay, so let, let's let's sort of explain this for a moment. Where the guy and turning into a sale or, or long term lease. In that case, when as soon as he loans him the money, it's not a loan. It's 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 a sale. It's a lease, and a sale. Works for Kenyan You can buy a property with money. <clears throat> so, therefore, that's the Kenyan. The Kenyan for the transaction, opposite scenario, what are you trying to do? Normally, it's a sale. Now you're trying to turn it into a loan. Well, what's the Kenyan? What's the Kenyan? How are you effectuating that change that's contrary to the, the, the typical custom? Do you need to make a Kenyan or not? You don't have Kenyan Kesef here because you're not buying it. To the, to the contrary, you're, you're making condition not to buy it. So does that, because you're going against the normal contractual relationships, does, does an additional opinion need to be made? So Amar Rapapa, Rapapa Amar Loi Tzorach Lamekna, you do need to. The Helka said Tzorach Lamekna Minei, you do need to make. Okay. Now, in this case, we have two scenarios here. The first scenario is the borrower comes in and says, one second, I got the money in the bank. Hang on. Stop your work. I'm coming to redeem the field. So Omar, So then the lender has to stop eating. And he couldn't sort of just, you know, the bank vote. We say stop. Wait until he carries over the money. And and um, and then you can you can no longer eat because it's going back to the borrower. However, let's say he says, Ezel itrich va'aisizuzing. Let's say he says in a second, I, I, I have this, I don't really have the money yet. So can he stop the, the, the lender from, from benefiting from his property? So Ravina Omar, Ravina says, Ochel. Ravina says the lender could eat. You, can, you have to stop. You cannot eat because the money is sort of, uh, even though the, the deal ha still has to close, but because it's so close to happening, it's you consider as if he has the money. Right. Amr of Kahana Republic Ravashi, I said, of Kahana Republic Ravashi would not rely on the leniency of Nechaisa. Nechaisa is a strategy for Mishkanta de Solik. Mishkanta de Solik is a collateral where the 
lender consumed the 